Do you know how with some types of jobs, the customer or client can give the person they hire for the job complete creative freedom? The person they hire maybe being someone like an artist or a designer or a craftsman of some kind? Sometimes they are given creative freedom with a job to do basically whatever they want to with their skills. At other times, and I would venture to say most of the time, they must work within limits or boundaries that are set by their client. For example, someone could get a new hairstyle and ask the hairstylist to do whatever they want, um, basically do whatever they think would look good on them. That would be like giving them creative freedom. Or they could tell the hairstylist exactly what they wanted. That would be giving them limits or boundaries. Another example is someone could order a cake and tell the baker and or the cake decorator to make a cake for them using their artistic skills to make something beautiful. Or they could ask for a cake and give the baker many details of how they want their cake to be. Another example is someone could employ a car shop to build a hot rod for them, giving them creative freedom to design and build something amazing. Or they could ask them to build a vehicle in a tightly controlled, specific way. I was thinking about this and how I want the Lord to have complete creative freedom with His work in me. I want to let him have complete creative freedom with my life. He wants complete creative freedom with those that belong to him. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. I think of the artists and designers and craftsmen who, when let loose to create whatever they want, are then able to create something really beautiful. Likewise, what wonderful things God can do when he has freedom like this. He desires this. May all who are his give him all of themselves and trust him with their lives. When a client gives creative freedom to someone they have hired, they trust who they hired to do the job. They trust in their judgment and in their skills and abilities. They have chosen to trust who they hired over themselves. They're trusting that they can do the job well without feeling the need to insert their own ideas or limitations. Maybe even realizing that the person they hired can create something better without their input. So they step back and let the person they hired do their thing or they trust who they hired to do the job because they know that they themselves don't know what to do. Either way, the point is they have let go and they trust the person they hired to do the job. I want to trust the Lord like this, too, and completely. I see that I must trust the Lord to really give him complete creative freedom with my life. If I hired a designer to create something for me, I would not give them creative freedom if I did not trust them. On the other side of that thought, there can be people you hire for a job that you trust so little that you feel the need to check on everything they do. Are they doing the job right? It can reach the point where you feel like you would have been better off doing the job yourself. However, I don't want to be like that with the Lord. I want to trust Him. I don't need to micromanage what the Lord is doing, and I don't want to because I know it's better without me trying to control things. Moving on, have you ever noticed that whatever the customer or client chose to withhold or whatever input the customer or client had in a design can sometimes turn out to be such an eyesore in the finished product? where if they had given the designer or artist or craftsman complete freedom, it would have turned out much better. 
Likewise, I do not want to withhold anything from the Lord or insist on having my input in His design for my life. I know that it is altogether better that way. The Lord seeks to test everything in the hearts of His people, that there is not something there they would withhold giving up for Him or giving to Him. Basically, that there is not something there that is more loved than Him. He works to test everything in our hearts. He wants nothing to be wanted too much to refuse giving it to Him. He wants to truly be our God. There is purity and holiness in this, and it allows Him to do His work in us and through us more thoroughly, fully, and with more unblemished fruit less bones in the fish, and it makes God's people a truer representation of Him. In my life, I want to trust and follow the Lord's lead, even if it seems He leads me to color outside of the lines. He loves to be creative. It pleases Him when we follow Him, wherever He goes, and however He desires to paint a brush stroke, so to speak. I remember as a kid, I would sometimes watch Bob Ross on TV. You might have heard of him. He was an artist and would create paintings on his own TV show. The whole show was watching him paint. He would typically paint landscapes with mountains and trees and water. He would speak in a soft voice talking of happy little accidents and such as he painted. I liked watching him paint. The somewhat slow pace of entertainment appealed to me. Anyway, I remember watching him paint and he would take a dark paint, it was black, and he would make a big vertical streak across the picturesque landscape he just created. In my mind, I thought, why did he do that? That doesn't look right. The painting looked nice before he did that. It didn't make sense to me, but I would continue watching and it was evident he knew exactly what he was doing. The dark vertical streak of paint would turn into the trunk of a tree and it would give a greater perspective of depth in the painting. I watched as he turned what seemed like an error into something beautiful something I couldn't visualize before, but he saw it. He knew what it would become and how it would make the painting even better. In the same way, I want to trust the Lord with the moves he makes, the leads he gives, and the things he does. I understand that I don't need to know the whole picture. He knows the whole picture, and I want to trust him with it. For my part, I want to simply take the steps he gives me to take. It's interesting to me how I described the dark streak of paint that didn't initially make sense to me in Bob Ross's paintings. It's interesting to me because of the correlation I see. Some of the deepest changes the Lord has made in my life have come from a dark, almost black sort of streak across what I thought was a very picturesque version of my life. I liked how my life was going. And then why did this big dark streak get painted over it? It seemed to ruin it. It seemed like an error. Later, I saw that it was necessary. I say later, I saw that it was necessary. I definitely did not see any good in it at first. It created things in my life I did not ever visualize before, but the Lord saw it. He knew what it would become and how it would make me closer to being who He wants me to be. Seeing this in my life helped build my trust in God. For what it's worth, I wanted to add that in my personal experience, it has been easier to surrender myself to God when it felt as if my life had very little value. It was easier to say, God, do whatever you want, when my life seemed to be falling apart and when I didn't love it anymore. Sort of like when someone says, here, you can have this, I, I don't want it anyway. 
like if someone had something like an apple and didn't like apples anyway so it was easy to give it away. It has been easier to surrender to God when I didn't like my life where when I liked my life I didn't want it to change. I liked it. I wanted to keep it for myself. Even so, I want to surrender myself to God even when things in life seem to be going great. Moving on, in this walk with the Lord, I want to move with Him, even if it is different than before. I want to follow Him wherever and however He leads and over what may have been usual or routine. I want to give Him complete creative freedom. I want to be faithful and flexible like that for him, and I want to be unafraid. He's not afraid, and he doesn't want me to be either. I want to put my confidence in him, in nothing else but him. May God's people throw themselves wholly into his hands and see the amazing good that comes from that. I remember that I have nothing of worth to lose as I follow and obey him. May there be an abandon to his will, that amount of freedom. I don't mean be without self-control, but let there be nothing holding you back and nothing you are holding on to that would keep you from following and obeying the Lord. Nothing. And see what he can do with a vessel such as this. Limits will fade away. What kinds of things might I be holding on to? What kinds of things might be holding me back from giving the Lord complete creative freedom, from surrendering all of myself to Him? I'll try and name a few. I'll try to keep it brief. Something that could hold me back is fear. Fear of all kinds of things. Fear of losing something. Fear of what others will think. Fear of what is unknown to me. Something that I might be holding on to instead of giving it up to God is a feeling of safety. When I go on faith and trust and do something God wants me to do, it can feel like I'm stepping outside of what feels safe to me, as in it is something new for me and maybe something I don't completely understand. Sometimes it's stepping out of a routine. Sometimes it's stepping out of what has always been or stepping out of tradition or what is expected. Another thing I might be holding on to instead of surrendering it to God are my belongings, my material things. I like giving gifts to people, even if they are small gifts. That is not difficult for me. It seems to come a bit naturally. Apparently it is a way I express love. But then in my mind, I challenge myself and think, if God wanted me to give my 1955 Cadillac to someone, could I do it or would I refuse? Basically, I think to myself, are there material things in my life that I could not part with even if God wanted me to? That is a challenging thought. In the Bible, Abraham was willing to give up his son to God. Could I do something less than that? I wonder. And Abraham is very much a role model of faith in God. I mean, could I obey or give something that is precious to me, to God? Could I give when it hurts? Or do I love the thing too much? I mean, I know some people who wouldn't give up their video games for anything. I really want nothing holding me back and nothing I'm holding on to instead of letting God do whatever he wants to with me and making me into who he wants me to be. I suppose the list of things I could be holding on to instead of surrendering them is almost endless. I might be holding on to saying something I want to say, but I know I shouldn't. I might be holding on to a grudge with someone when I should let it go and move on. I might be holding on to my idea or desire of how I think my life should work out and how and when. 
I might be holding on to pride and some sort of reputation. I want to serve him, my God. I want to let him have complete creative freedom with me. I want to serve not man and his traditions, but serve God and his ways, which are not like man's ways. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. He wants to do his own thing with each of us. Let him. Complete creative freedom. And see what he can do. What he wants to do. The outcome is best that way, every time, rather than when he works within man's constraints. He works to get rid of those constraints, even though in his mercy he works where he can, as well. As for me, I want to let him do whatever he wants to, and I want to see what he can do. I want to trust him to create a beautiful work. For my part, I want to follow and flow with him. I can trust him, and he wants me to. Lord willing, I will continue on this walk with him, and I won't be afraid. The Lord knows I do not see the whole route, the whole path. I remember that he knows me, and he knows my frame. I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful that he knows my frame, because I don't want him to expect too much of me, I guess. Sometimes I think, Lord, you know what I am, don't you? I'm just a person. You know how weak people are, don't you, Lord? Well, yes, he does. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He is mindful that we are dust. He knows my frame. He knows what he's working with. And he chooses me still. And he chooses you still. And I am certain that God, who began the good work within you, will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. I'm going to play a couple hymns on the piano. The title of the first one is Take My Life and Let It Be. The title of the second one is I Surrender All. I think they go well with this theme of letting the Lord have complete creative freedom. When I sing the words to these songs, especially the second song, I must confess that to me they are some of the most challenging songs to sing and actually mean the words I'm singing. I must confess that when I sing some of these words, my conscience is slightly bothered. Or maybe my flesh is slightly bothered. Can I say I surrender all and mean it? Do I mean it? I want to mean it. I hope that it shows in my life at each opportunity of surrendering something to the Lord. My spirit is ready and willing, but my flesh is never willing. It always resists. Nevertheless, I can sing these songs and have the words be a sincere goal for me if they are not already a reality for me. I have a few more words before I play these hymns. Put your faith in God. You might have heard people say to other people, I have faith in you. They have faith in them to do whatever it is they're doing or are going to do. I can imagine a customer or client saying that to someone they have hired when they are given creative freedom. They are basically saying, I have faith in you. Use your judgment and skills to create something beautiful. I trust you to create something better than I could. And they step back and let the person they hired do their thing. They might not know exactly what will be created, they just trust that it will be good. When I have really trusted someone to do a job, my attitude has been, I'd better get out of the way so they can do their thing. 
I have faith in you, is what God's people should say. That is the heart set and the mindset we should have toward God. And then surrender all that we are to him. May his people trust him beyond what seems logical, what our minds can arrange in such a way where we understand what's going on. Beyond where we can see the whole picture and let him handle it, we are to follow and obey him. The outcome is better, the outcome is best every time for our lives than if we run it ourselves, than if we make it a do-it-yourself job, so to speak. For this to work out, we must put to death our flesh, submit ourselves to his ways, obey him, follow him, trust, and have faith. We must surrender and submit all of ourselves to him for the optimum outcome. Then we can see how God will work, what he will do, what he wants to do. We will see his will being done in our lives. It was by faith that Abraham obeyed when God called him to leave home and go to another land that God would give him as his inheritance. He went without knowing where he was going. I like that verse. Imagine that. Abraham left home without knowing where he was going. I'm very impressed with that. I admire that kind of faith very much. I don't know exactly where I'm going in this life with God, but with his help, I'll take the steps he gives me to take, and I will trust him.